when we are practicing nonviolent communication and we are practicing asking for what we need, the quickest way to make the entire experience of nonviolent communication feel pretty toxic to people is to couple our needs with a demand. It's the demand energy that makes it toxic or off-putting, okay? It's not the asking for what we need. The trick is to ask for what you need in a way that is vulnerable, not entitled. So sometimes when people begin learning the language of feelings and needs and the, um, you know, like observation, you know, in nonviolent communication, we practice sort of neutral observation, stating how you feel, tuning into how somebody else feels, stating what you need, tuning into what somebody else needs, and then making a request. And making a request, the essence of a request is that you're equally open to a yes or a no. You're just giving somebody an opportunity <clears throat> to meet your need if it would also meet their need. That's what makes it a compassion-based nonviolent act is that it works for both people. When I come in with all of my needs and all of my feelings, and I begin relating to you, other people and the rest of the world, as if I am entitled to have you meet my needs, and that the problem is that you don't understand how to do that, so therefore I need to train you in meeting my needs. This is not going to feel very good to people because the kind of giving that we're trying to cultivate is what Marshall Rosenberg used to call natural giving, the inspired giving that arises in you from an open heart because you care and you want to give something, not because you've been told that there's something you're supposed to deliver and now you need to deliver it because it meets the other person's needs and you're left out of the equation. So that's one piece. Now, some nuance in there is, uh, I'm just gonna walk through the context that you gave me. So the one is, uh, I know she has some disapproval related wounding, so I said what she asked. So I'm gonna translate that for you. Um, that sounds like what you're saying is, um, I have some insight into some of the things that are challenging and difficult for her, and I care about her, and I love her, and I want to contribute to her well-being. And in that moment, I chose to submit to the demand. Mm -hmm. I also noticed in that moment that it felt icky. The submission felt icky. There was some way in which I wasn't being held fully in that moment that I was also longing for. So if we could slow down time, if in these moments we could hit a pause button, right? And, and freeze frame it and give ourselves some time to become more awake and aware and alive in that moment. Let's pretend we were able to do that. Then what we could do is we could sit there and we would first do a little bit of self-connection. I, I do have care and desire to contribute to my friend's well-being. I do want her to be able to ask for her needs. Something right now is not feeling good to me. If I start thinking about demands and manipulation, emotional manipulation, and, 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 or that I might be triggered, some language that might capture my own experience in that moment might sound like, dear friend, I would love, I would love to give you the things you're needing. And there's something happening right now that's making that difficult for me. And I need some time to figure out what that is. I, I want to trust that I can play, stay in a place of choicefulness. And when I tell you things, I really want it to come from my heart. And at the moment, it feels like it's going to come from my head in order to appease you. And I don't think you're actually going to get what you need. And I love you and I care about you. So give me a little bit of time. Let me just figure out what's happening for me. If you have the experience, when we have the experience of staying in full choicefulness and taking our time and honoring the whole of our experience, we can find very gentle ways of expressing care while not moving into submission too quickly. Mm -hmm. And then another thing we can do with that is we can say, okay, the strategy I used in that moment was submission. What needs of mine were met by choosing that strategy? Perhaps I was meeting needs for ease, for harmony, Perhaps just doing what she asked bought me some time. And that was the easiest thing to do. It was the, the best move that I had available to me in that moment to give her what she's asking for. But what I realized is there was a cost to me 
and I want to bring that online and this conversation isn't finished yet, mm-hmm. I may then want to loop back. And then I can say, okay, you know, remember that moment? Here's what happened for me. I have some insights into something that happened in that moment. Now I, I wanted to chat about it. Are you open? I had this inner conflict and, you know, I want to stay in choicefulness. And when, um, when I hear that you have to have something now in this way at this time, I notice a lot of resistance coming up in me because I've got a lot of needs for open heartedness and choice and flow and freedom. What's it like to hear me say that? And then you can start getting into a dialogue and sort of building some understanding and some bridge building. And, and you, you want both people's needs to be held with care. And we always, you know, if we're going to be speaking nonviolently, compassionately from the heart, right? That's what we do here, conversations from the heart. Heart conversations are never forced. We don't force other people. We don't force ourselves. We create conditions that allow whatever is true to emerge. And maybe what's true is I don't appreciate you. I mean, I wouldn't say that in the early stages, but I want to contact whatever feels true for me. And then I want to have ways of expressing my truth in ways that are kind. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean the truth doesn't sometimes hurt. I can be very kind about a truth and it may still be what somebody, something somebody doesn't want to hear. And then we can talk about developing courage because that's still necessary. Mm 